Why do some people accomplish so much more in their personal and professional lives than others? This question has occupied some of the very best minds throughout human history. More than 2,300 years ago, Aristotle wrote that the ultimate aim of human life is to be happy. He said that the great question that each of us must answer is, how shall we live in order to be happy? Your ability to ask and answer that question correctly for yourself, and then to follow where your answer leads you, will largely determine whether you achieve your own happiness, and how soon. Begin with your own personal definition. How do you define success? If you could wave a magic wand and make your life perfect in every way, what would it look like? Describe your ideal life. If your business, work, and career were ideal in every way, what would they look like? What would you be doing? What sort of a company would you work for? What position would you have? How much money would you earn? What kind of people would you work with? And especially, what would you need to do more or less of to create your perfect career? If your family life were perfect in every way, what would it look like? Where would you live? And how would you be living? What kind of a lifestyle would you have? What sort of things would you want to have and do with the members of your family? If you had no limitations, and you could wave a magic wand, in what ways would you change your family life today? If your health were perfect, how would you describe it? How would you feel? How much would you weigh? How would your levels of health and fitness be different from what they are today? Most of all, what steps could you take immediately to begin moving toward your ideal levels of health and energy? If your financial situation were ideal, how much would you have in the bank? How much would you be earning each month and each year from your investments? If you had enough money so that you never had to worry about finances again, how much would that be? And what steps could you take starting today to create your ideal financial life? Do your own thing. Popular definition of success is being able to live your life in your own way doing only those things that you want to do with the people who you choose in the situations you desire. The notes case, when you begin to define what success means to you, you can immediately see things that you should be doing more of or less of in order to begin creating your ideal life. And the biggest thing that holds you back from moving in the direction of your dreams is usually a lack of self-discipline and your favorite excuses. It's not that you don't know what to do, but rather that you don't have the discipline to make yourself do what you should do, whether you feel like it or not. Join the top 20%. In our society, the top 20% of people earn 80% of the money and enjoy 80% of the riches and rewards. This Pareto principle has been proven over and over again since it was first formulated in 1895 by Vilfredo Pareto. Your first goal in your career should be to get into the top 20% in your chosen field. In the 21st century, there's a premium on knowledge and skill. The more knowledge you acquire and the greater skill that you apply, the more profit and valuable you become. As you get better at what you do, your income earning ability increases like compound interest. Unfortunately, the majority of people, the bottom 80%, make little or no effort to upgrade their skills. Most people, according to Jeffrey Colvin's 2009 book, Talent is Overrated, learn their jobs in the first year of their employment, and then, they never get any better. It is only the top people in every field who are committed to continuous improvement. Because of this increasing disparity of productive ability, based on knowledge, skill, and hard work, the top 1% of people in America today control as much as 33% of the financial assets, starting with nothing. Interestingly, almost everyone starts out the same in life with little or nothing. Almost all fortunes in America and worldwide are first generation. This means that most individuals started with little or nothing and earn everything they own in their current lifetime. The wealthiest people in America are almost all first generation multi-billionaires. This is the case with wealthy Americans such as Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Harry Ellison, Odell, and Paul Allen. Fully 80% of millionaires and multimillionaires started with little money, often penniless and sometimes deeply in debt, with few advantages, 
such as Sam Walton, who died worth more than $100 billion. Why have these people been able to achieve so much, when so many have achieved so little? In their book, The Millionaire Next Door, Thomas Stanley and William Danko interviewed more than 500 millionaires and surveyed 11,000 more over a 25-year period. They asked them why they felt they had been able to achieve financial independence when most of the people around them who started at the same place were still struggling. Fully 85% of this new generation of millionaires replied by saying something like, I didn't have a better education or more intelligence. I was willing to work harder than anyone else. Hard work is the key. The indispensable requirement for hard work is self-discipline. Success is only possible when you can overcome the natural tendency to cut corners, take the easy way. Lasting success is only possible when you can discipline yourself to work hard for a long, long time. As I mentioned in the introduction, I started my own life with no money or advantage. For years, I worked at laboring jobs, at which I earned just enough to get paycheck, paycheck. I stumbled into sales when I could no longer find a laboring job where I spun my wheels for many months before I began asking that question. Why is it that some people are more successful in selling than others? One day, a top salesman told me that the top 20% of salespeople earn 80% of the money. I had never heard that rule before. This meant that the bottom 80% of salespeople had to be satisfied with the remaining 20% but what was left over after the top people had taken the lion's share. I decided then and there, I was going to be in the top 8%, and this decision changed my life, the great law. Then I learned the iron law of the universe, which made getting into the top 20% possible. It was the law of cause and effect. So, and we be. This law says that, for every effect, there is a specific cause or series of causes. This law says that, if you want to achieve success in any area, you must determine how success is achieved in that area and then practice those skills and activities repeatedly till you achieve the same thoughts. Here's the rule. You do what other successful people do over and over again. Nothing can stop you from eventually enjoying the same rewards that they do. But if you don't do what successful people do, nothing can help you. The law of sowing and reaping from the Old Testament is a variation of the law of cause and effect. It says that, whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. This law says that, whatever you put in, you get out. It also says that, whatever you are reaping today, is a result of what you have sown in the past. So if you're not happy with your current crop, it's up to you starting today to plant a new crop. Begin doing more of those things that lead to success, and to stop engaging in those activities that lead nowhere. Success. Predictable. Success is not an accident. Sadly, failure is not an accident either. You succeed when you do what other successful people do over and over until these behaviors happen. Likewise, you fail if you don't do what successful people do. In either case, nature is neutral. Nature does not take side. Nature doesn't care. What happens to you is simply a matter of law, the law of cause and effect. You can look at yourself as a machine with a default mechanism. Your default mechanism is the almost irresistible attraction, the expediency factor, and the path of least resistance that I described in the introduction. In the absence of self-discipline, your default mechanism goes off medically. This is the main cause of underachievement and the failure to realize your true potential. When you are not working deliberately, consciously, and continuously to do be in have those things that constitute success for you, your default mechanism is at work. You end up doing those fun, easy, and low-value things in the short term that lead to frustration, financial worries, and failure in the long term. The great oil man, H. L. Hunt, who was at one time the richest self-made billionaire in the world, was once asked by a television journalist for his secrets of success. He replied, there are only three requirements for success. First, decide exactly what it is you want in life. Second, determine the price that you're going to have to pay to get the things you want. And third, and this is most important, resolve to pay that price. 
One of the most important requirements for success, once you have decided what it is that you want, is the quality of willingness. Successful people are willing to pay the price. Whatever it is, and for as long as it takes, until they achieve the results desire. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to be healthy, happy, thin, and rich. But most people are not willing to pay the price. Occasionally, they may be willing to pay part of the price, but they're not willing to pay the price. They always hold back. They always have some excuse or rationalization for not disciplining themselves to do everything that they need to do to achieve their goals. Pay the price. How can you tell when you have paid the full price of success? Simple. Look around you. There it is. You can always tell how much of the price of success you have paid by looking at your current lifestyle, your bank account. By the law of correspondence, your outer world will, like a mirror, always reflect the person you are and the price that you have paid on the inside. There's an interesting point about the price of success. You must always be paid in full and in advance. Success, however you define it, is not like a restaurant where you pay after you've enjoyed your meal. Instead, it's like a cafeteria, where you can choose whatever you want, but you must pay for it before you eat it. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar says, The elevator to success is out of order, but the stairs are always open. Learn from the expert. Kop Kopmeyer, who I mentioned in the introduction, also told me that the second most important success principle your self-discipline is that you must learn from the expert. He said you will never live long enough to learn it all for yourself. If you want to be successful, first job is to learn what you need to learn in order to achieve the success you desire. Learn from the expert. Read their books. Listen to their audio program. Attend their seminars. Write to them or approach them directly and ask for advice. Sometimes one idea is all you need to change the direction of your life. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Some years ago, I was referred by a friend to an excellent dentist. I learned later that he had a superb reputation. He was called the dentist's dentist. He was the dentist that the other dentists went to when they needed excellent dental work. He told me that he attended every major dental conference that he could. When he was there, he attended every session, listening to dentists from all over the country and all over the world discuss the latest breakthroughs in dental technology. One week, great sacrifice in time and money, he attended an international dental conference in Hong Kong. At that conference, he sat in on a session given by a Japanese dentist who discovered a new technology in cosmetic surgery that improved the appearance of teeth and enabled people to look handsome or beautiful indefinitely. He returned to San Diego and immediately began using the new technique in his practice. Soon, he became excellent in this area and developed a national reputation. Within a couple of years, people were coming to him from all over southwestern United States for this treatment. Because he had developed this expertise, he could raise his fees again and again. Eventually, he had made so much money that he was able to retire at the age of 55, financially independent, and able to spend the rest of his life with his family, traveling, and fulfilling his dreams. The point of this story is that by continually seeking out ideas and advice from other experts in his field, he came across a new technology that helped him become the leader in his field and saved him 10 years of hard work in order to achieve the same level of financial success. This could happen to you as well. Only, you become a lifelong student of your craft. Mental and physical fitness need to be ongoing. Achieving success is like achieving physical fitness. It is like bathing, brushing your teeth, and eating. It is something that you need to do continuously every day. Once you begin, you never stop until your life and career are over. You'll achieve all the success you desire. Not long ago, I was giving a seminar in Seattle. Just before the break, I encouraged people to buy and listen to my audio programs on sales, time management, person success. At the break, several people came up to me to ask me questions about the seminar content. One salesman pushed his way forward and said loudly, When you encourage people to buy your programs, you should tell them the whole truth. They asked, How do you mean? He went on to say, 
you are not telling the whole truth about your programs. You should tell people that they only work for a certain period of time, and then they stop working. Again, I asked him, what do you mean? He said, well, I came to your seminar about five years ago, and I was completely convinced by your presentation. I bought all your programs and began listening to them. I read every day in sales, and you were right. For the next three years, I tripled my income. I became the top seller in my company. But then, the income flattened out and has not increased at all over the last two years. Fact is, that your materials stop working after a certain point. I then asked him in front of all these other people, what happened to you two years ago when your income flattened out and stopped increasing? He searched his memory and thought for a while and said, well, I was selling so much that I was hired away by another company. Ever since I started my new job, my income has remained flat. I asked him, what did you do differently in your new job in comparison with your previous job? He started to answer, and then he stopped. A shocked look came over his face. Finally, he replied, oh my gosh, I stopped doing it. When I changed jobs, I stopped reading in sales. I stopped listening to audio programs. I stopped attending seminars. I stopped doing it. He walked away, shaking his head and muttering to himself, I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it. Becoming an expert in your field, continually upgrading your skills, which I will talk about in Chapter 5, is like physical fitness. If you stop exercising for any period of time, you don't maintain your fitness at the same level. You begin to decline. Your body and your muscles become softer and weaker. You lose your strength, flexibility, and stamina. In order to maintain them, you must keep working at them every day, every week, and every month. Become all you can be. There's an even more important reason for you to practice the self-discipline that leads onward and upward to the great successes that are possible for you. Practice of self-discipline enables you to change your character, to become a stronger and better person. The exercise of self-discipline has a powerful effect on your mind and emotion, developing you into a different person from the one that you would have been without self-discipline. Imagine yourself in a chemistry lab. You mix a series of chemicals in a Petri dish, put it over a Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner heats the chemicals to the point at which they crystallize and become hardened. But once you crystallize these chemicals using intense heat, they cannot be transformed back into liquid form. In the same way, your personality begins like a liquid, a fluid, and formless. But as you apply the heat of self-discipline, as you exert yourself to do what is hard and necessary, Rather than what is fine and easy, your personality crystallizes and hardens at a higher level as well. The greatest benefit you enjoy from exerting self-discipline in the pursuit of your goals is that you become a different person, become stronger and more resolute. You develop great self-control and determination. You actually shape and strengthen your personality and transform yourself into a better person. The rule is that to become someone that you have never been before, you must do something that you have never done before. This means that to develop a superior character, you must exert ever higher levels of discipline and self-mastery yourself. You must do the things that average people don't want to do. Another success principle is that to achieve something that you've never achieved before, you must learn and practice qualities and skills that you've never had before. Practicing self-discipline, you become a new person. You become better, stronger, and more clearly defined. You develop higher levels of in, respect, personal pride. You move yourself up the ladder of human evolution and become a person of their character and resolve. Success is its own reward. The wonderful thing about the achievement of success is that every step in that direction is rewarding the now. Each step you take toward becoming a better person and accomplishing more than you ever have before makes you feel you're more confident and more fulfilled. You've heard it said that nothing succeeds like success. What this means is that the greatest reward of success is not the money you make, but rather the excellent person you become in the process of striving toward success and exerting self-discipline every time it's required. We're going to talk about what I consider to be one of the most important things I've ever found in life, which is the principle of excellence. And the fact is simply this, your true success in life begins only when you make the commitment to become excellent 
than what you do. Develop that commitment, you'll always perform at low levels and you will never achieve your full potential. Every study of high achieving men and women proves that greatness in life is only possible when you become outstanding at your chosen field. Dr. Srali Blotnick of New York did a 20 year study into self made millionaires. And what he found was that there were several key specific qualities that differentiated the millionaires from those who didn't make it. The first one was that they specialized. At very early in their careers, they made the decision to do something that they enjoyed doing. And as a result, doing something they enjoyed doing, they became very good at it. And becoming very good at it, they were eventually paid very well. They became totally absorbed in their work. As a matter of fact, they became so totally absorbed in what they were doing that they were not even aware that they became millionaires. In addition, they were not gamblers or risk takers. Once they earned the money, they invested it carefully and let it accumulate. One day they woke up and found that their net worths were over $1 million. Now this is very important. They held on to their money. They saved it. First of all, they chose the field they enjoyed. Second of all, they became good at it. Third of all, they were paid very well. And fourth of all, they held on to the money. They did not invest in get-rich-quick schemes. They did not try to double their money quickly. They started to get into something that you didn't know that you hadn't specialized in. It was the surest way to lose everything that you would earn. Now, the famous Pareto Principle says that 80% of your results will come from 20% of your activities. In sales especially, the rule says that 80% of the sales will come from 20% of the salespeople. In my experience, the top 20% in sales, and I work with thousands of the top salespeople in America, most top 20% are always people who have made a conscious decision to become experts in the field of selling. Prudential Insurance Company did a study of their thousands of agents a few years ago and found out that the 80-20 rule held true for the wide geographic area. 80% of their sales were coming from 20% of their sales feet. Now when they sat down and they looked at the figures and the statistics, they ran them through the computer and found that this worked out that the top 20% were earning on average 16 times that of the bottom 80%. So they decided to carry this study a little bit further and they compared the average income of the top 20% of the top 20%, which is the top 4%. And they found that the average income of the top 4% was 32 times the average income of those in the bottom 80%. So they took the study a little bit further, and they took the top 20% of the top 20% of the top 20%, which is the top 0.8%. And they found that the top 0.8% were earning, on average, 54 times that of the average of the bottom 80%. Same product, same market, same price, same competition. And in the stake, there was at least one adult agent who was earning more than 50 other full-time adult agents. In every case, the top people had made a decision a long time ago. Were you that? Were the people in the top 20% 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80%? Were they 16 times faster? 16 times more experience? Did they work 16 times harder? What about the people in the top 4%? Were they 32 times smarter? Did they work 32 times harder? Yeah. In every single case, the difference translated into enormous differences in income was just slight marginal edges, slight tiny differences in cost. And that's all that it is. The top 20% in every field are just a little tiny bit better in certain areas than the bottom end. Now remember this, the top 20% in every field prosper in good times that excellence is the key to lifelong economic security. If you make the decision to become excellent in what you do, you have lifelong economic security. So you don't have to worry about money. But then you only then have to worry about how much you earn. Of course, how much. Remember, instead of trying to be hundreds of percent better in one area, concentrate on just being one or two percent better in hundreds of areas. This is the key to excellent. This is the key to achieving. Now the same principles of excellence hold true for companies as for individuals. A perfect example is IBM. If you talk to IBM people, if you look at IBM advertising, you'll find one point which has been made over and over for over 60 years. Hey, this is IBM. You yeah. didn't. Service. You know that if you buy a product from IBM, you want to get the best service in the world. And many people will pay far more for an IBM product that does exactly the same thing as another product. Because that security that they have knowing if they buy from IBM, IBM is care of it. That way, IBM is developed in the area of excellence. The area of excellence is that nobody will compete with them on service. And that is the key perception.
in the minds of the millions of people who buy their products and sometimes pay more for their products throughout the world every year. Every single company has to have a competitive advantage that enables them to stand out from their competition. The market will always pay extra bonus. The chief enemies of excellence are satisfaction and complacency. Most people settle for mediocrity. All their lives can never even think about becoming excellent. Remember, you will never feel really happy and secure to you know you are happy. I think much of the unhappiness in the world today don't get up in the morning and look in the mirror and the person who looks back at them is it particularly good? They, now it's not difficult to achieve excellence in your chosen field if you will do the following. Number one, make a decision right now, today, commit yourself to becoming excellent. Set it as a top priority goal. Number two, remember you will only be able to achieve excellence doing something that you love to do, something you care about, something that interests you and holds your key. A key responsibility of adult life is to find the right field for your unique gift. Here are some questions. How would you describe your ideal job? You could have any job in the world. What job would it be? How would you describe? Imagine a billionaire is willing to give you any job you want in the whole world. Why would it be? Now the purpose of these questions is to stimulate your thinking. Remember, you can have or be or do almost anything you want in life if you can decide what it is. And one of the things that you have to decide is what is going to be your area of excellence. You see, if you can find what you love to do, you'll almost invariably find that you will love to do something that you're good at. And if you can find what you love to do and what you're good at and what you care about and what interests you, you'll get one of the greatest bursts of joy and satisfaction in the world. Your work will become your Your choice of the right job for you is one of life's critical decisions. But until you find the work you are meant to do, you'll never be happy. They'll never be satisfied, you'll never be really successful. Remember, you are put on this earth to do something remarkable, something unique. God does not play dice with the human race. Nobody on this earth is here or redundant for any reason. You're here for a part. And you're here to find your area of excellence. And it's all your whole heart into it, and it becomes very, very good. In doing that, that you will make your great contribution on this earth. Number three, once you've chosen your field, Spend one hour per day in study and become better. This is so simple that it's devastating. That's all you need to do. One hour per day in any field will put you in the top 5% in two or three years. I've made this claim in other places. I've told salespeople that they will spend one hour every morning reading and studying and sales. And if they will listen to takes one sales in their car when they're driving around, that they will double their income. Nothing that. And I've had people come back to me and say that very simple system of reading 30 to 60 minutes each morning, listening to tapes in their car, to enable them not to double but to triple their income, and not in 90 days, but in 30 days. That's, most people don't read, most people don't learn. When you begin to read and learn and become excellent in your field, you begin to move out very, very rapidly. Remember, every excellent performance reinforces your self-esteem, improves your self-image, it builds your self-confidence, Improves your performance in every other area. Every single time you do something in an excellent way, it makes you feel great about yourself. But if you only do things in an average way, you don't get any, you don't get any feeling of satisfaction, you don't get any burst of enthusiasm, you don't get any extra self-esteem, you will always go the extra distance, always do that little bit more. It makes the job. Completing that job, I think, gives you that wonderful feeling of competence. That's when you begin moving toward excellence, you will find that there's very little real competition. Remember, the people in the top 20% are competing with the people in the bottom 80%. They're only competing with the people in the top 20%. They're competing for degrees of excellence. Remember the three keys to excellence. Number one is know what you're doing. Take the time, learn, study, research, question. Learn everything there is to know about your chosen. Number two is believe in what you're doing. You can never become excellent doing something unless you really believe that you're making a difference. Unless you really believe that your product, your service, or your efforts are really important in the world. And number three, love what you're doing. And this is the key. Listen to your intuition. Listen to your gut. What is it that you really love to do? And don't make any excuses. I spoke to a executive from a major manufacturing company who's telling me about a salesman but on staff. The salesman had no experience in the industry, but within six months, he was the salesman in the country. And I asked him why it was that he was able to start 
no experience or background in the industry. Of the and he said, well, I don't know, really. He said, but there's one thing that I do every day that tell me. And he said, every day when I get in the car for the 10 or 15 minutes, as I'm driving to my first appointment, I say over and over again, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. I found that if you say it over and over again, repeat it over and over again, and drives it down into the subconscious mind, causes you to perform better than sometimes you so make the decision, visualize, affirm, repeat, open, open, and visualize, see yourself as the very best in your field. Think about how you would look, what you would be, what qualities and attributes you would have, who you would be working with, how you would dress, how you would walk, like, you'll do that. Nothing can stop the growing to Do something every day to improve, study your performance, review and reflect on what you're doing and what you would do differently. And number two, ask yourself, what would I do differently? How could I improve it next time? You see, if you review what you did right, and if you think about what you would do differently, as you review and reiterate these points, you drive them into the subconscious, they go into your program, so that the next time you're in the identical situation, the subconscious, and looking out through your eyes, like, I've been here before. Here's the right things to do. The big mistake, and the biggest mistake that you possibly make, is to review what you did wrong. Because if you review what you did wrong, inevitably you will program that into the subconscious mind, and in the next similar situation, you will repeat the wrong performance. So always think about what you did right. Always think about how you improve. Here is the key to peak performance. And this comes from the research into peak performance. Prior to every important experience or situation. Take a few minutes to recall your previous excellent performance. Seek out advice from other people who are good at their work. Ask the top people in your field. Ask them for recommendations on books. Courses. So seek out winners in your field and you'll be astonished. Winners will always help other people win. Winners will always give you advice and tell you what to read and what tapes to listen to. Seek out the very best people in your field and say, I want to be good like you. What can I do? What can I change? How can I improve? What can I read? And they'll give you the advice. And then finally, never even consider the possibility of not achieving your goal of excellence. If anyone else has done it, so can you. And I'm not saying that to achieve excellence is easy. It's very difficult. It requires tremendous self-discipline. It requires tremendous work on yourself. It requires hours and hours of arduous effort late at night, instead of watching television or having fun. It requires a tremendous commitment. Every single step that you make on the road to action, and every single excellent performance, follows. They'll build your self-esteem. they make you feel terrific about yourself. They'll increase your income. They'll enhance your situation. Improve the overall quality. Happy Gary. Commit yourself to On that road to action. Never stop. Then you achieve. But finally, with the next, remember that excellence, the journey, is not a destination. That you never arrive at excellence. The better you get, the more you realize how much more you can still find. So you'll never arrive on Get onto that road. Stay on that journey to excellence. Stay on it for the rest of your career. You are put in this world to do something wonderful with your life. There has never been and will never be anyone just like you. You are unique in all of human history. Your special combination of talents, abilities, emotions, ideas, attitudes, and philosophy makes you separate and distinct from all other beings who will ever live. You have extraordinary potentials of talent and ability that you habitually fail to use. One of the most important questions you ever ask and answer is this. What kind of a difference do I want to make with my life? What do you want to be famous for? How do you want people to think about you and talk about you when you're gone? What kind of a mark do you want to leave on the world? What do you want to do that will benefit and improve the lives of other people while you are here on this earth and afterward? In his writings, Peter Drucker tells about a high school teacher who advised his students to begin thinking of the legacy that they wanted to leave when they passed on. Even though they were only in their late teens, it turned out that a few of them had taken that message to heart and had already begun thinking of leaving a legacy, and they started their careers. Each of those students, he found, had reached far higher levels of success in their careers than had the other students who had not given the idea of leaving a legacy very much thought. 
respect. They were more serious, self-confident. The thought of leading a legacy influenced their thinking and affected their decision-making for several years. What kind of a legacy do you want to leave? Stephen Covey in his best-selling book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, says that the four great goals of life are to live, to love, to learn, and to leave a legacy. It seems that most of the great men and women of history have given a good deal of thought to the contribution they wanted to make to their society while they were alive and after they were dead. Peter Daniels, an Australian businessman, read more than 500 biographies and autobiographies of famous men and women. He found that these men and women all had one thing in common. He calls it a sense of destiny. Throughout history, men and women who have left a real mark on their societies have believed that their lives had a special meaning. They believe that they were put on this earth to do some great thing that would benefit mankind. When I was a young man, I traveled by Land Rover through Africa and worked with Dr. Albert Schweitzer at his village of Lamborghini in Gabon. Schweitzer was one of the greatest humanitarians in human history and his story is worth remembering. When he was 30 years old in the late 1800s, he was the top Bach organist in Europe. He was the equivalent of a musical superstar today. He played in the great concert halls in the great capital cities of Europe. He was highly respected and extremely successful. And yet, at the age of 30, he began thinking about making a greater difference with his life. At that time, at the end of the 19th century, Africa was just opening up. There were many stories in the newspapers and magazines describing the sufferings and privations of the native peoples throughout the continent. He decided that he wanted to go to Africa and work with the natives. Albert Schweitzer decided to become a medical missionary. To that end, he went back to school and devoted eight years of his life to earning a degree in tropical medicine. He played concerts on the side to raise money. At the age of 38, he loaded his medical supplies on a ship and sailed to Africa. He transferred his supplies to a small boat and traveled up the Uguay River to a thatched village called Lamborghini. There, he set up his tent and began his work. By the time he died, 53 years later at the age of 91, his village hospital had grown to a population of 1,500 people with 40 medical doctors and specialists drawn from all over the world. Within 10 years of his death, there were more hospitals in the world named after him than after any other person in history. He left a legacy that will last a hundred years and perhaps forever. In leaving a legacy and making a difference with your life in your community, begin with your values. These may be spiritual values, economic values, social values, personal values, human values, or any values at all that you consider to be important and relevant to the human condition. Many people contribute their time and money to their churches and to their spiritual activities. Others are committed to making a difference politically or economically. Many men and women are committed to improving educational opportunities for children or to teaching literacy to adults. Some people are committed to the environment and others to population control. The one factor that these people all have in common seems to be passion. People who make a significant difference in their worlds all seem to have a great passion for what they are doing and for what they espouse. They're often willing to suffer tremendous privation and make incredible sacrifices to promote their ideals. They believe deeply in the rightness and goodness of what they stand for, and they're willing to go great distances to promote their causes. Herodotus, the Roman philosopher, once wrote, All of life is action and passion. Not to be involved with the actions and passions of your time is to run the risk of having not really lived at all. Viktor Frankl, the founder of Logotherapy and the author of the book Man's Search for Meaning, survived the Nazi death camps of World War II. During this time he had a profound revelation. He found that the strongest driving force in the human psyche is the need for meaning and purpose.
It was an intense desire to be committed to something bigger than the individual himself or herself. Viktor Frankl concluded that each person needs to be able to commit himself or herself to a cause that is greater than he or she is. Each of us needs to be dedicated to something that helps and benefits the lives of other people in some way. Each of us needs to be able to rise above ourselves, to get out of ourselves, and to put our hearts into doing something that makes a difference in the world and in the lives of others. So what is your vision of a perfect world? If the world were ideal in an area of great concern to you, what would it look like? Imagine that you could wave a magic wand and bring about the perfect situation, whatever it would be, what would it look like? When I work with nonprofit organizations around the country, we always start off with a vision statement. In this vision statement, we ask, what is our mission? We ask, if we were completely successful in achieving our mission, how would we know? What would it look like? What would happen? What goals would we have to achieve for us to be able to disband this organization and go home, content that we had been successful? Look around you in your society. There are many nonprofit organizations aimed at achieving a variety of social goals that need your help. Don't make the mistake of the average person who puts off getting involved until he or she has lots of money. Instead, invest your personal time and energy until you are in a position to invest your money in the organizations you believe in. Give of your time and emotion in a cause that you consider important today. Make this practice of contributing a regular part of your life. What are your goals for the type and level of contribution that you want to make to your society? If you had an unlimited amount of money, what would you want to do or achieve with that money in terms of improving your society or your community? And how would you measure your success? John D. Rockefeller, who became the richest man in the world at his time, started as a clerk at $3.75 per week. Even at that small salary, he gave as much as 50% of his salary to his church every week to contribute to the betterment of others. The years passed. When he was 52 years old, he was extraordinarily wealthy, probably the richest man in the world. He was also extremely sick, and his doctors told him that he would die within a year. In his sickbed, he thought back on his early years and the pleasure he had received from contributing to his church. He resolved that he would spend his last year giving his money away. He sold half of his stock in the Standard Oil Company and turned it into cash. He then began financing worthy causes around the country. Something incredible happened. The more money he gave away, the better he felt. His health improved. His illnesses and diseases went away. He recovered completely. He went on to live to the age of 91 in excellent health. By the time he passed away, he had given away millions and millions of dollars. Meanwhile, the value of the standard oil stock that he had kept had increased so much that he died worth more in financial terms than he had been worth when he was on his deathbed many years before. Now identify the specific habits that you would have to have if you wanted to make a significant contribution to your society. You may want to develop the habits of self-discipline, self-denial, diligence, wisdom, foresight, patience, and humility. It's amazing how much you can get done if nobody cares who gets the credit. What are the daily activities that you would engage in if you wanted to make a contribution to worthy causes? What would you do regularly to assure that you were making a genuine difference in the quality of your community? Would you be attending meetings? making telephone calls, writing letters, serving on church or community boards or committees. There's a rule that says, the more you give of yourself without expectation of reward, the more are the rewards that will come back to you from the most unexpected sources. When you dedicate yourself to serving others, to assisting in a cause that is greater than yourself, 
you receive profound emotional and spiritual benefits that can be vastly greater and more important than any material rewards you could imagine. One of the great secrets of success is for you to always do what you love to do. It is for you to find something that fascinates you and attracts you. It is for you to then put your whole heart into doing whatever that is extremely well. When you find a cause that you really care about, and you begin putting your whole heart into that cause, into making a difference in your society, your community, you feel terrific about yourself. You feel happy and fulfilled inside. You feel important and valuable to yourself and to your world. You unlock more and more of your potential and become more and more of what you are truly meant to be. You move into a position of true leadership. Decide today to make a specific action commitment to do something that makes a difference. It may be something as simple as making a financial contribution to an organization or cause that you believe in. It may be phoning an individual or organization and volunteering your services. It may be setting a goal to do something that can have a profound impact on people in the years ahead. But wherever it is, do it now.